the Vietnam War began in Vietnam, surprisingly, but not for the reason you may think. You see, the war began not because of the United States, but excuse me for my use of the F word here, France. <laughs> Well, in a nutshell, first we need to go over the context, because explaining history without context is like watching the Kardashians without plastic surgery. It's impossible. So our spicy sexy story begins when France comes out of nowhere and colonises Vietnam. Now, Vietnam wasn't really happy with this. Vietnam had something like, pff, I don't know, 26.3 people living there, and at least 3.6 of them weren't happy with their new French conquerors. So their plan to get rid of them was simple. Camera 1, these 3.6 Vietnamese people will go to France. Camera 2, these 3.6 Vietnamese people will beg the French to get out of Vietnam. Camera 3, Camera 3, and if that fails, the biggest war in history was about to begin. Hello, France. Oh, hola, amigo. I am from France. I am from Paris. France, you, you, you lesbian. What are you doing in Vietnam? Oh, sorry. I apologize. Look, it's not that we want you to leave. We just want you to get lost, get out of our country, France, and go back to where you came from. Oh. Are you sure you want us to leave? I mean, we have the baguettes. Totally changed my mind. You can stay here in Vietnam and rule this, sir. Aww, don't call me sir. Call me daddy. <laughs> Arr, I'm out of here. So this is where things get interesting. Right, so basically, I've been to France. They're not leaving. Oh, flipping. I knew this would happen. I've created a video presentation of what we should do now. <laughs> Tonight, I burnt my balls in a toaster. Then we set it off in a drum fire full of little children. And then we go to war against France. Okay, that was definitely the most pathetic thing I think I've ever watched, but we'll go with it. We'll go to war against France. Vietnamese rebellions broke out against their French nemesis. It was starting to become the hot new trend for people to start cheating the French. Those 3.6 Vietnamese people just didn't like French people. If they had to choose between being French or jumping off Mount Everest dressed as Ronald McDonald, they'll be off that mountain before you could scream 3, 2, 1 McDonald's. But something crazy was about to happen that would transform this minor war between France and Vietnam into one of the biggest wars in history. Now you may be wondering, but Charjack, how in the name of Belle Delphine does World War II have anything to do with the Vietnam War? Well, because of World War II, France left Vietnam. Completely. So the 3.6 Vietnamese were like, Yay, France is gone, that means no more colonists. But then Japan invaded them the following month. What in the fudge biscuits? What are you doing here, Japan? The 3.6 Vietnamese people were so angry at Japan taking them over. They just wanted independence. They didn't want yet another country taking them over. So Vietnam... So Vi <laughs> This video is so stupid. So Vietnam, in a fit of rage, went up to Japan to show them he was the big daddy. <laughs> Oi, Japan, you rabies infested squirrel! Get out of our country, Japan! I am entertained by your efforts for independence, Vietnam. So let's strike a deal. Tell me a joke, and if I like it, I'll leave. Oh, okay then. Um, oh, I got it, I got it. How does a person with a lisp say osmosis? I don't know. How does a person with a lisp say osmosis? Osmosis. <laughs> but they just don't do they? You're just wrong. I am definitely invading you now because of that pathetic joke. <laughs> All right, it's dinner time. <laughs> so under Operation FU, Japan invaded Vietnam. So now the 3.6 Vietnamese people had a new goal in mind, even greater than the last one. Defeat Japan in war. Vietnam had to be independent. It was their fetish. But the Vietnamese were struggling against the Japanese in battle. <sighs> Hello, my favourite fatless orphan with acne pooping fertility problems. Y y you didn't need to bring that up. Yeah, I really did. I y you didn't. <sighs> I can't believe the Japanese are taking us over. Well, if they do take us over, at least they've got anime. Also, please tickle the subscribe button if you're enjoying this video so far, because I completely depend on internet points for validation. Come on, it's so weirder than saying smash the subscribe button. Give me a break. The 3.6 Vietnamese weren't doing very well, but just as all hope was lost, a communist freedom fighter showed up with a solution. A solution that would change history forever. The name of this communist freedom fighter was PK Spanx. <laughs> 
First name P, middle name K, surname Spanx. Okay, the guy behind the Vietnam War wasn't called Mr. Spanx. His real name was Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh had a massive fetish for Vietnam to become independent, so he decided to raise an army to fight back against the Japanese. <clears throat> Hello, my dear children. I am here to liberate you from the Japanese. I give you all a gift. Oh, I love gifts. Let's open it. Wait, why have you given me a gun as a gift? I'm not American. Uh, guys, the Japanese is coming? My dear child, I'm giving you all a gift because I am starting up a rebellion and you're my first members. Our rebellion shall be called the Vietnam Doc Luck Dong Min Hoi. Um, well, um, um, that's pathetic. That's not a very memorable name. It'll be hard to recruit members when I'm going up to people saying, hey, want to join the Vietnam Wet Dongle? Dongle dongly thing. Why don't we just call ourselves something cool like the rebellious 10 or something? Uh, guys, Japanese are coming? My dear child. I am not your child! Stop saying my dear child to make yourself sound like some wizard or something. Well, plot twist, I'm actually your real dad, mate. I left you on the streets to die when you were born because no one wanted you. So I have good reason to say my dear child to you. Now zip it. Oh. My gosh. Anyway, my dear child, I do not wish to be rude, but the Rebellious Ten is the most pathetic name I have ever heard. It's not. My child, you're not just wrong, you're stupid. And you're ugly, just like your mum. Look, we can just be called the Viet Minh for short, just not the Rebellious Ten. Now, want to join my rebellion? <sighs> Go on then. Guys! Oh my gosh, the Japanese are here! The Japanese are here! I did tell you. The newly established Viet Minh fought the Japanese in numerous battles during World War II, and they thought this war could potentially go on for decades. But then in a shocking turn of events, Japan surrendered to Vietnam only three years later when they lost World War II, and it was on the basis of that that the victory was declared to be theirs. This was amazing news for Vietnam, so Ho Chi Minh was like, yay, Japan has gone, that means no more colonists. But then France invaded them the following month. Again. What the fuck? Sorry, that felt really weird pretending to swear. I've never actually sworn in my life. True story. Can't be going around saying the F word, fart, or the N word, nipple. Ho Chi Minh was just not happy to see France back. This was as annoying for Ho Chi Minh as having to talk to ginger curly haired people. I think I've only met like one guy with ginger curly hair and he wasn't weird. I, I, I don't know what I'm on about. <laughs> Ho Chi Minh, in an absolute fury, went up to France and was like, What are you doing here, France? Again! Oh, do we have colonized you again, Vietnam? Je smit or je die? On a slightly related note, have you ever put toothpaste on your testicles? No. Why? <laughs> well, it burns and it's irritating and that's what it feels like talking to you right now putting toothpaste on your testicles I'm gonna destroy you baguette boy. You dare mess with me. You mess with the tribe So Ho Chi Minh had to gather up his supporters again for round two. This time things are gonna be more deadly than ever Oh, this war is gonna be harsh. Well, at least we still have me and 3.6 Vietnamese and one of them is dead. Okay, so we still have one guy, the other guy, and 0.6 of someone left. That's still 2.6 of us. Ho Chi Minh's declaration of war on the French began what you could call as the first phase of the Vietnam War, but this isn't the Vietnam War as you know it yet. That's phase two, and that's coming soon to a cinema near you. But on a serious note, this war began in 1946, which is just one year after World War II ended. Imagine celebrating the end of World War II and then having this war bestowed upon you. Life must have been absolutely horrific for people at the time. Now this though is where things start to get interesting. So far, the war in Vietnam has been noteworthy, but this was the moment where Vietnam's war ended up getting the attention of the entire world. But why? Well, you see, the Vietnam War began at the same time as the start of a much larger conflict called the Cold War, where the two most powerful countries in the world, the capitalist United States and the communist Soviet Union, were at war with each other. Not in a literal war, because nuclear weapons had been invented and if they fought, it would be the end of the world. But they fought instead just by annoying each other, like two sisters arguing about which Barbie super world doll has more powers. Both countries were interested in the war in Vietnam, not just because they wanted the war to end so the Vietnamese could finally enjoy top quality entertainment. Gangnam style, bum 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 bum. Imagine people listening to this outside, that would be embarrassing. But so both sides could support the country that they wanted to win. The communist Soviet Union wanted the communist Ho Chi Minh to win so they could stick up the middle finger at the capitalist United States. And the capitalist United States wanted the capitalist French to win so they could stick up the middle finger at the communist Soviet Union. Wow. 
Wow! But the US was way more interested in the Vietnam War than the Soviet Union. The famous reason why, although it is important to know that other reasons do exist as well, is because of a nifty little theory they had at the time called the Domino Theory. The Domino Theory was the theory that if Vietnam fell to communism, another country would become communist as a result. And then another, 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 and then another. Until your mum's communist, which the US wasn't really the biggest fan of. Commie, commie, ah! And the US would do literally anything to prevent the Vietnam from becoming communist. And if that meant defeating Ho Chi Minh, that meant defeating Ho Chi Minh. This is incredible. Amazing. This war between the Viet Minh and the French is one that I can take advantage from, benefit from. Hello? Hello. It's the President of the United States speaking. I'm calling you today because Ho Chi Minh's communist Viet Minh are back at war with the French. I am aware, sir. But I have suspicions that this time the French might lose against Ho Chi Minh's strengthened forces. Oh really? I have been advised that you are the best man possible in preventing a communist takeover of the country. Wow. Well, I accept your offer, sir. I will have something planned for them. Something so deadly that they will never forget it. So now the fierce Vietnam War was raging on between the Viet Minh and the French. But, after a few years of fighting, the French started to get impatient, thinking they really should have won the war by now. They had had multiple French commanders by this point try to stamp out the Viet Minh rebellion, but all of them failed. The French realised that if they were going to be able to beat the Viet Minh, they would have to face the Viet Minh in an ultimate showdown. They would have to face them in one battle. One battle that would decide the fate of the entire war. So the French rounded up a massive army and went on the march to hunt for Ho Chi Minh himself, to kill him once and for all. Meanwhile, Ho Chi Minh was just visiting a village, raising the morale of his troops, not realising what was just about to happen to him. My dear children, I am Ho Chi Minh. I am here with my most loyal supporter. What? What's your name again? Uh, Bob Bernard Trevor Guy. Bob Bernard Trevor Guy? That doesn't sound like a very Vietnamese name. Well, I'm not actually Vietnamese. I'm from. Oh, if I can pick a popular country. Um, uh, British <laughs> Indian Ocean Territory. Is that an actual place? Apparently, yes. Okay, well, Bob Brother Trevor Guy is going to deliver a short motivational speech to motivate us against our French enemies. My men, my children, my women. Oh. My women. It's a well-known fact that the French are at war with us. I don't like that because the French are bad. You know what the French say? Les miserables. France is miserable. I, I don't think that's a thing. But we can win this war. All of us in this camp today have something that the rest of the world does not. And what's that then? We all have two nipples. Is that the end of the speech? Yep. What are you talking about? First of all, how is that motivational? Second of all, it's not even true. Everyone has two nipples, not just as ten poorly drawn characters. I only have one nipple. Not gonna question it. French people have two nipples as well as us. All you have to do is look at a bunch of shirtless French guys to work that out. What, and you're admitting to everyone that you've looked at a bunch of shirtless French guys? Well, uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, um, I'm not gonna deny it on multiple occasions, but... Okay, fine. Liking men is not gay, okay? I, I'm just saying. SILENCE! Do you hear that? Oh no, it's the French. They're here. The French had arrived ready to deal a knockout blow to the Viet Minh. They had decided to set their troops nearby in... <laughs> Dien Bien Phu. I'm not going to pronounce this place. Dien Bien Phu was a mountainous area. The reason they picked this location was to cut off the Viet Minh supply line so they could starve the Viet Minh out, force them to face the French, and then just get absolutely annihilated. That was the French plan. But Ho Chi Minh had a trick up his sleeve. He knew he would have to confront the French at some point, or everyone would starve. But he chose not to recklessly head in without at least preparing first. First, he orders his troops to go up the mountain terrain to surround the French garrison. The French were now trapped. Next, the Viet Minh set up anti-air 
aircraft and artillery guns and pointed them straight to the French garrison. Then, Ho Chi Minh gave the order to start the bombardment, immediately killing a commander and a whole battalion. They then charged at the French defence and a World War I themed trench warfare broke out between the two sides, with the Viet Minh launching assaults occasionally to overrun the key areas. The French troops were desperately relying on air supplies from planes to keep them going, but most were shot down by the Viet Minh anti-aircraft guns, starving the French out. Eventually, the Viet Minh launched a massive assault and managed to overrun and crush the weak French garrison. The French survivors were then marched to prison camps, but most never made it there alive. 16,000 French troops came in, less than 100 escaped. It was a shocking defeat for France and the end of the war, but things were far from over. In fact, things were only just the beginning. Hello, sir. Hello. It's the President of the United States again. The time has come. Spies have informed me that the French have lost the war. Oh, really? Yes. It's confirmed Ho Chi Minh's communist forces are going to take over the country. Indeed. But I will not let that happen. You better not. Of course, sir. I will come in and face him myself and crush him like a bug. Do not let me down. Oh, I won't, sir. I won't. The Viet Minh beating the French was amazing news for Vietnam. Now Vietnam was finally free. Finally! My dear children, I will now be able to unite the country under my rule. Ah! Oh! Oh my gosh! Not so fast. What? What are you? Who are you? I am your new ruler, the ruler of Vietnam. My name is Dean. You're not the new ruler of Vietnam, I am. I won the war fair and square. That's what you like to think. You really thought the capitalist United States would just let Vietnam become communist into your rule only because you won a single battle? I think not. What? The President of the United States himself requested me to stop you and your communism taking the entire country over. I don't care you've won a war. I'm here to stop you, and I have support from the entire United States military. But you can't just take over the entire country. I've already won it all. That's what you think. A deal has been signed. Vietnam will be split in two. You get to rule North Vietnam under your communist regime, and I, Dean, get to rule South Vietnam under my anti-communist regime. You get the northern half of Vietnam, I get the southern. This isn't what I wanted. I wanted all of Vietnam, not just the North. It only gets worse for you. You won't even have control over the North for long. Your communist North Vietnam will soon be a war by anti-communist South Vietnam. And I have the United States on my side. You will not last long. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs>